Hello. Hi, Robert. Happy, happy, what day is it? Wednesday, I think. Friday. It's not Friday today, is it? It is over here. I don't know. What do you, maybe you <laughs> No. He has a different calendar. I think you're right. Oh, gosh, it is, isn't it? Oh, my week yeah. has been so weirded out. I don't know about yours, mm. but it's. I, I still haven't really got back to the swing of things of the, um, you know, what day it is, is it, what time it is, and who, mm -hmm. who, who are we, and the whole COVID thing. Yeah. Strange. So, so where are you coming in from? You're not in America anymore, are you? Oh, yes. We came back from Hong Kong in um, early 2019. Oh, right. So, yeah, my home is California. I was born and raised here. And so we came back and took a bit of doing. but And we actually had to move three times that year. Um, but we found a house and we're just north of San Diego. If you, I'm sure you know that. As a, well, as a landmark, sort of in between San Diego and Los Angeles, in a very nice um, coastal valley. Oh, really nice. Yeah. I was, I was, yeah, I was just talking to my son about L.A. I lived there for a while, and it, he said there's a lot of homeless moved in. Oh, know, God. So. Is it bad? Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Oh. Well, it's not their fault, but, I mean, Obviously. what's happening is, yeah, because of the policies here, so... A lot of the other states send their homeless to Los Angeles. And what about re rehousing? There's no chance of the, <laughs> too, too many people. $60,000 for a tent is what the city of San Francisco is paying. You know, and uh, so most of these people are just, they, they do it themselves. I don't, I mean, they obviously have some money from somewhere. And uh, then they just camp out wherever they can and. Um, most of them now are um, um, living like semi-wild people, you know. I mean, they just, even in places like Malibu where I grew up, they live in their cars or they just live in the bushes or tents or whatever. It's just, and, um, it's, it's, you know, the sanitation and just the, the squalor you know it just it's it's ridiculous the police can't even deal with it there's just too many people really just just wow yes. just living wild there like because I, I remember malibu beach it's absolutely gorgeous so now it's mm -hmm. just full of tents and people living wild N not so much malibu beach but um up and down the coast there you know in various areas so yep I don't know if that's you or me with that play. That's going. you. Oh, right. I, I'm quite near Heathrow, so okay. that's annoying. Um, so everybody, you know, you, you need no introduction, everybody. Um, <laughs> everybody loves you, and um, I hope I do a good job of the show today um, okay. talking about... Because um, I haven't heard you on the radio much lately. No, I took a break. Um, it was time for me to step away from the microphone and... Uh, for my own safety as well as my family because times as you know it's this it's right now um public speaking is is actually kind of dangerous and certain topics tend to trigger people more than others and it's not the people i'm, I'm concerned about it's these entities that that you read about in the shining ones the so-called fallen angels or the fallen ones that's that's who i was warned would really uh want me gone if if i was to push too hard about them so i've been i've been kind of treading on thin ice with them mm. I, I i know what you mean it's 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 strange um entities i when i was young i was always interested in serial murders and and met mm -hmm. a couple as a journalist and um God. Yeah, and it was interesting because I always felt that they didn't do it, and it was the the entities. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of them that I met, I felt um, attacked by something psychically within him that was. That's why I thought it was him psychically attacking me. And then when I studied <laughs> magic and stuff, and I had an experience with um, a shake from Oman, um, who who was saying he was taking a gin out of me, mm -hmm. and I had a whole experience with. Um, I met him on the astral plane and he showed me a portal to the world of the jinn and then wow. i met 
my own gin, which kind of it was a, had a really weird experience. And this gin <laughs> sucked me through his his eyes, and then wow. I saw my organs in jars. And he then got rid of my uh, bones. He crumbled them, and I felt what it was like to be dead, which is quite pleasurable actually to not mm. to not have fear. And and he showed me that I lived in a in a silly way because I didn't have any worries and my worries were in that jar because my mm. brain was in there and it was all to do with the <laughs> physical, you know, money and living and all that stuff that sort of drags you down. And so yeah. I became really interested in entities thinking, you know, because I, I, I then started to study the jinn and um, I think the jinn have got a big interaction um, with us right now. And I know we don't know much about them. The Muslims do. And mm -hmm. then I was reading through the book you sent me, um, The Shining Ones. And that, again, is about Enoch's um, interaction with the fallen angels, uh, Shem Yaza and um, Azazel. And of course, you've got Yahweh there. And it's interesting how <laughs> the, the author was explaining him as not the overall God, like, of course, the Muslims well, it's the same name, Allah and Yahweh, they're the same. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And so they have sort of gone ahead and, you know, we all worship Yahweh as, as the overall God. But Yahweh mm -hmm. probably is um, something else entirely, which is all quite interesting. So I wanted to talk to you about mm -hmm. that. And, you know, mm -hmm. I know you've spoken about Enki and Enki wanting to upgrade us. And there's, there's so <laughs> much going on. So, so much. I mean, I watched that American Horror um, last night. It's called, I think it's just called American Horror. And it was um, mm -hmm. a series called Apocalypse. And it was all about Lucifer coming. And they were all carrying out Satanism. And Netflix is really quite, you know, banging the drum of this agenda. Everything you watch from Netflix is so satanic and they were doing mm -hmm. blood sacrifices they were doing human sacrifices anton levey um someone was playing the part of anton levey and they were using proper magic and you know it was really attractive in a way because you had lucifer this angel who had a lot of power and it was saying you need to come over to this side and i could see anybody watching it they probably would be really attracted because they made it attractive mm -hmm. that's why they call it programming Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, it was because it was like, do you want psychic powers? Do you want to be able to do this? Well, if you do, just just mm. join Lucifer. I mean, if I were a bit younger, I think I would say I wouldn't mind a bit of that. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let's be clear about something. It, Lucifer is not Enki. The rebellion, as you could read in The Shining Ones there by Christian O'Brien, which few people have read. And I was startled to, to find only recently, um, it was the lower ranking shining ones that, that caused the rebellion. And it wasn't in heaven, it was here on Mount Hermon. And so what these lower ranking shining ones did, and now we call them the fallen ones, which you'd mentioned some of their names earlier. Um, they're the ones that are responsible and they have tried to deflect blame onto Enlil and Enki, the two higher ranking brothers or sons of Anu. And so the whole narrative has been twisted around by the fallen ones. Uh, just like every criminal or criminal organization, they always try to deflect blame and use uh, false names or identities to continue their crimes or not be you know punished they're trying to hide they're always trying to hide their their culpability so that's that's a big part of the problem here um and I, i've actually been looking for that information in that book the shining ones for a long time because i knew it was out there i just didn't know where to find it huh. and i was guided to it recently so there's other books by the same name one of them is by philip gardner also another man from the uk right Philip Gardner, and he's an interesting guy, but I don't find him as credible or uh, as as uh, Lawrence Gardner. And I, and Lawrence Gardner was you know very outspoken about some very strange things about the the, whole, the bloodline of the Grail and uh, the, the I think he called them the dragon something or other. Um, 
but but he did know about the shining ones i think more than philip so you lawrence and philip are both from the uk and it seems to be that people in the uk know more far more about the shining ones than any other group that i've come across for some reason um but you could also see in that that brief pdf that i showed you about the difference between sitchin's interpretations of the sumerian text and others um, as as opposed to mr o'brien and I find that uh, that, to me, is very credible. And, and it actually helps put things in a proper context. Look, I, I, I met Sitchin. We communicated over phone and over the mail. And then one time I met him in person. I read his books. Um, but I think that he was just a public relations person for the fallen ones. Whether he knew it or not, I don't know. Don't really care. I do know that he graduated from the London School of Economics, much like George Soros. So there seems to be that, I mean, he was given a scholarship. He couldn't afford to go there. He was supposedly this poor little boy from uh, some weird little country. I'm in the, in the, one of the stands, you know, in that region of the yeah, world. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. So um, there seems to be, the, you, you'd mentioned Jehovah or Yahweh or whatever that mm -hmm. guy was. He, to me, he seems like one of the fallen ones. And, um, that that was put uh, in charge of. They were given the original um, uh, agreement was when the rebellion started was that um, they they were the the higher ranking shining ones were going to create helpers, workers that was going to help the lower ranking one, the shining ones, um, and that's where we came from. There was multiple Adam and Eves, and um, we were we are a hybrid of the shining ones as well as the more primitive earthling and some of the, although Sitchin touched on that he did, he he really got a lot of it wrong in my opinion i always felt it was there was something wrong and off about that oh the other thing i'm i got to tell you about Zachariah Sitchin is that um he definitely had an affiliation with the masonic order and one of the books that he wrote the the lost book of enki is pure fiction if you just look in the foreword to the book, it actually says in there, this is what I think Enki would have said. So, um, again, this is there's there's something completely off about that. And um, the problem is that when the the lower ranking shining ones who now have to call the fallen ones or fallen angels, they um, instead of t watching over us and and teaching us gradually. <laughs> how to be more like them in a benevolent way. They, because they were carrying such a grudge against the, their superiors, they decided to weaponize us. So not only did they mate with us and create offspring, they also started um, creating hybrids, not just human hybrid. I mean, well, they took, they took some of the DNA, but they, all, they created, like we're doing now, chimeras. They, they created monsters. I believe they also had artificial intelligence at that time, and um, what they did was the, the the rebellion came in in two phases. So the first one, there was some sort of uh, agreement, you know, just to get them to calm down. They said, "Look, we'll, we'll help you. We're going to give you workers that are intelligent enough they can work with you." And hence, Homo sapiens were created. Us. Unfortunately, like I said, they 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 basically they instead of doing what they were told, they 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 completely flipped the the, the script and they um they used us as the, uh their muscle, a way of negotiations. Supposedly that they if they had enough of us and and these monsters and stuff, then then they could have a position of power, essentially here. And um, that went very badly, I mean, very, very badly. And um, they were captured. They were imprisoned. All of their offspring were killed. And uh, actually, it said it, they were induced to kill each other, much like we're doing now all over again. Uh, their monsters were killed, the, the freaks, the chimeras, um, hybrids, whatever you want to call them. The AI was destroyed. And people equate that with the flood now i think there's a lot more to it than that and eventually hopefully we'll see the the actual detailed records 
apparently there were um, detailed records kept there at the, the base at Mount Hermon. And um, unfortunately, that got destroyed during a flood, not a global flood, but a 1,000 year flood up on the mountain, which destroyed pretty much everything, including the, the records they were keeping. So um, now most people know or think they know what the, the flood of Noah, what came after that was somehow the whole thing started over again. And my wife asked me a very important question recently because she's reading that book also, The Shining Ones. She said, how did, how did this all get started over again if they, if they were imprisoned and, you know, and why, why are we seeing the exact same thing happening now, thousands of years later? And I had to think about it for a minute and connect with the Shining Ones because I, I do have a very strong connection with them. I didn't know that was what they were called, but um, it all makes sense to me now. So anyways, I reached out to them and I immediately got this impression in my mind, which is, um, and you can read this in the book, The Shining Ones. It says that they were very upset about having to do this police action on their, again, with their, their own people. And they really didn't, they were, you know, traumatized by the fact that they had to capture their own and um, imprison them and kill these monsters and, and our ancestors too at the same time. And it, and it was, it was really traumatic. So uh, it caused, it caused a schism amongst the higher ranking shining ones. So now this is, again, this is just my impression, but I believe it's accurate or I wouldn't even mention it the higher ranking shining ones decided to release the lower ranking ones, the so-called fallen ones from captivity, give them a second chance. Okay. On this world, which now has it at that point was their prison. They were not permitted to leave. If they tried to leave, they would be, they would die. And not only that, their souls would be disintegrated. And that, is that's about as extreme as it gets the the net have, have you read any of west penray's work uh yes i have yes okay so you know he talks about this net the soul catcher net around the planet yeah <clears throat> that was put there by the higher ranking shining ones to imprison um the the fallen ones so if they try to get off this world either physically or through the spiritual astral portals and stuff, they, they're, they're literally going to commit suicide. And they know that. So what, here's what the agreement was. Look, we're going to let you out of the prison, the, your prison cell, your whatever, the um, isolation. And we're gonna, you're going to be released back onto this planet, but you can't leave the planet. And we're going to give you another group of human earthling, whatever you want to call us, the hybrid homo sapiens sapiens, we're going to give you another group and you're going to watch over them the way we originally asked you to do. If you can do that, then there'll be dispensation. There's, we'll give you clemency. Okay. If you just, if you follow through with the agreement as we, as originally intended, here's your second chance. And what they did with that is pretty obvious. I mean, but I'll, I'll just, let me detail it because for some people who don't may not be following what I'm talking about after the flood, it was, it, it's not because of like some demon hitched a ride with one of Noah's family. That seems to be the common narrative. It's nonsense. It's just not what happened. And the reason they don't, the fallen ones don't want us to know all this is because it's, well, it's not only embarrassing it, it they're guilty. They're guilty. They were given a second chance. They were, and, and actually all, a lot of the souls that were here, the young souls that came here and started foolishly um, working with the fallen ones, um, they need to learn a lesson as well. So this is all being permitted to happen, to play out, because in my opinion, this is a school. In any case, the, during this, this phase here where we're in the second chance, the fallen ones decided and said, look to each other, it they they uh, said we're not th we're not going to accept that this is our prison. We're going to turn it into our fortress, and we're going to continue the rebellion. 
which they had swore an oath to each other to, you know, to stand together um, against their superiors. And that's what they did. They once again, they started mating with us, creating um, chimeras, rebuilding artificial intelligence. And, and the final thing was that they started opening portals. They they couldn't open portals to leave. So they opened portals to invite in these demonic entities from the lower astral. The, the sole purpose of all of that was to create, as I said, their original intent was to create some sort of leverage, basically an army. Uh, talk about a motley crew. They they literally created this freakish army of um, different factions that would be um, have an allegiance to them, that would work for them, and against the Shining Ones. And and that's where we're at right now. And um, the reason I'm telling you all this <laughs> is because it's not going to go on forever. It was never intended. It's not like you get for, for they, 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 this is it. This is the second chance and they've blown it. They have doubled down on the dark side and um, they've convinced a lot of souls to follow them. And ultimately where they're going to end up is in the lower astral and for as long as it takes for them to realize their mistakes. So what what's going on? I mean, the the higher and the lower. Where on that mm -hmm. would Yahweh be? I believe he was one of the lower ranking fallen ones. You can see by the way he treats the, the his so-called chosen people. He's grooming them to be super soldiers to do his bidding. And anybody who doesn't is severely punished or killed. You know, it's it's very calculated. And um, you can also read in, in that book, uh, The Shining Ones, it, he, it talks about how he was replaced at some point because he was so, he was just so over the top tyrannical that it was not serving the purpose of the overall agenda of the fallen ones. So he got... It's just like in the mafia, you know, you have one particular Don that hmm. is a boss, right, the, so, of a of region. So who it's was, a little too cocky. Who what? was he replaced by? It says in the book, and I forget. And again, this is a, there's a bit of speculation because they're not using the exact name. Yahweh is a title. Just like uh, so many of these characters, their names are not really names as we know them. They're their titles like Lucifer means life bearer, Satan means adversary, mm. uh, Elohim just means the shining ones. It's not a name, mm. it's a title. Um, so, but, but the, the okay, so it doesn't, I know, I understand what you're asking me, but it's not really important. Mm. The fact of the matter is the grooming happened genetically. I mean, um, the Israelites were programmed to, to be subservient to this whoever you want to call this particular overlord and they they fear him just like christians say i'm a i'm a god-fearing christian well okay why i mean who are you f afraid of hmm. i thought god was loving you know what wh why well you look at the old testament and you can see where this is coming from and what about the the others so the lower ranking ones include azazel and shemyaza or were they the higher there was quite a few. No, oh no, it's only the lower ones. It, it says in the book that there was three tiers mm -hmm. amongst that particular group. I'm not sure it's like that everywhere. You know, the other thing about the the book that we're talking about here, and anybody who wants to read more about it or get a copy, uh, please go to my website because I have a link directly to the publisher there in the UK, and it's a lot. The price is far more appropriate. When you go directly to the um, to the to the publisher, so my website is spelled U N I C U S Magazine dot com. It's it's right there on the home page. You can link to this information we're talking about. Um, so there, this particular group, the Shining Ones, um, is even they are superseded by a group called the Invisible Ones. And, and that's a strange name. I think it's a little bit misleading, but it's it's used in the Gnostic text. It talks about the invisible ones. Just one of the lower ranking invisible ones is 10,000 times brighter than our sun. 
yeah, that's what I said when I was reading. I'm like, okay, you don't want to bump into somebody like that, especially if they're not, if they're upset with you. I mean, this is not, um, all the nonsense that we get caught up in here and in our daily lives is really pales in comparison to the overall um, hierarchy of creation. And that was what was so amazing too. Now, I've already, because my dad was a disciple of Yogananda, I was exposed to a lot of the Eastern philosophy, the Vedic you know, teachings, but I'd never seen it put to, in such a, a succinct manner the the way they delineated these these different realms and the rules and the administrators and how our souls are created in heaven by God truly God and that they at and at some point when they're ready our souls dis, descend down into the lower realms through the causal the astral to the physical so that we can learn and grow back all the way up through the physical astral and causal back to so-called heaven the highest realms uh when we're ready when we're when we've really been um cultivated or what do you call it? yeah when we've developed our our potential enough to be back in that that highest realm but um so one of the things and I, i'm sure you you would already know this but i'm going to say it anyway <laughs> when one of the things is we we're, we're told all the rules when we enter these different realms and one of the rules is that we have to agree to forget which at first you say that's not fair well um it kind of makes sense because if you if you have too much foreknowledge of something you may not even participate in it and so it's probably best i think it's a you know the other thing is when i read that I always thought that this was a mistake. You know, growing up here this particular lifetime, I thought there's this is so screwed up. You know, how could a benevolent God let this even exist? This crazy planet and all the suffering and, and stupidity. But when I, as I was reading the book, I thought, oh, wait a second. It says in here this was not just permitted, it was mandated by God that the lower realms would ex not not only exist, but they would pers they would persist forever because it it serves a purpose. And as I read that, I thought, wow, okay, now it makes sense to me. Obviously, God is benevolent, highly intelligent. I mean, beyond our comprehension, <laughs> and even though it created us as souls when we're first created, we're like seeds on a tree. We have all this potential to become trees, but we're we're just seeds. You know, we've got to go through that whole process of being planted in the soil and germinating and growing and and you know it takes time and effort so um yeah it, it it's it's not a mistake and in fact it said in there which i totally agree with that our souls like a classroom if we cannot graduate to the next level if we don't learn the lesson it is we're basically by our own hand we're going to be stuck and repeat those lessons again and again until we do understand them and pass those tests. So what is our relationship supposed to be with the Shining Ones? Are we supposed to, mm. um, because we, why don't we have knowledge of them? Well, I suppose we do in a way of Yahweh. I mean, does Yahweh, mm -hmm. is he still bouncing around because he's getting prayed um, to quite a lot, isn't he, by all of us, mm -hmm. really, if you think about it. Everyone yeah, that's... All... Catholic and yeah, I know. Um, it's under false pretenses. The the whole thing about religion on this planet is it's organized by the fallen ones so that we worship them or work for them to serve their agenda unknowingly. And so, you know, you probably heard this phrase before: "Is that ignorance is no excuse for the law?" Hmm. Because ultimately, I could, you know, look if I can find this information, if if the O'Briens could have publish this information for public consumption. That means that you can't just argue from a point of ignorance saying, oh, I didn't know it was hidden from me. Um, did you look? Did you take the time to actually look? Because yes, uh, they're, they're hiding things, the truth. They're, they're lying to us constantly. They're trying to keep us divided so that they can r rule over us, continue to rule over us 
because they don't want us to be united. They don't want us to be well informed or especially about who they are and how they manipulate us. I mean, that's the thing about religion. Uh, Jesus didn't create Christianity. That came later. The Gnostics were, they didn't have anywhere near the same kind of um, dogmatic ferocity about conquering everybody who didn't agree with them. That came from the Romans, who are really Babylonians. And um, the thing about them is everywhere they went, they would just uh, co-opt people's belief systems in order to get them to be more uh, agreeable or subservient to them. So then, you know, in other words, let me try and be more succinct here because there's a lot flowing through my brain right now. I'm trying to summarize this. Although it feels like we're being victimized, the truth is we're these all these obstacles that are thrown in our path are actually uh, opportunities for us to grow and learn, to become stronger and smarter and more, to be more specific. We are here to become perfected as souls, not just here in this realm, but the next realm and the next realm. So we have at least three levels to go. I know some people have been talking about, oh, we're going to ascend. Um, maybe, I mean, that's that's part of our purpose for being here. We descended down into these lower realms. And yes, of course, we're going to ascend, but it truly is a meritocracy. My understanding of creation is it really is a meritocracy. Now, it can be corrupted in certain areas, like this world became this prison. It's run by criminals. Um, so it's very difficult. You know, you think, um, well, what good does it do me to be honest and tell the truth and, and be a good person to, to serve, help serve humanity? Um, well, I mean, cause you know, I could just make a deal with the devils and, uh, yeah, I'll get some sort of reward. Yeah. But you're also going to be, you're going, you're going to end up in a place that you're going to suffer. And, and you can't blame anybody else. I mean, in that regard, we all kind of make our own path. You know, this thing about being judged by God is uh, very misleading, and it creates a lot of guilt and confusion in people. A meritocracy means it's based on the merits of your your the uh, the choices that you make and the actions that you take every day that goes into your permanent record. Some people call it the Akashic record. I'm, I don't really like that term, but it makes sense that an intelligent God would have set up this system. And I do believe most of it's automated. It ha would have to be, because how would you else would you administrate something as complex as this? It's, I mean, it's just mind boggling. I, I mean, in fact, I, I, I don't think we're designed to fully comprehend it here in this format. Yeah, we're a little bit like hamsters in a cage that can't really see what's going on outside the cage. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> no, okay, and but that's why when we are in an altered state, when we meditate or other things cause us to project, our soul literally goes into these other dimensions which we're connected to anyway. Uh, it, we just become more aware of it when we loosen the bounds here, the the the, the chains that bind us to the physical. Um, they can be broken easily, but you have to want it. Um, sometimes it happens by accident, but typically most people have to want it. And I, I actually, I find that most people don't want it until they're in, <laughs> until we're in a position of uh, suffering. Yeah. That seems to be the greatest motivator. Yeah, otherwise we're all um, enjoying the toys and the, you know, right. the TV. And... It actually says that in the book um, about how the role of whether they know it or not, these fallen entities, not just here, but every in all the, all the lower realms, their job is basically to, to do that to us, to distract us and divide us and, and challenge us. And the thing is, they enjoy it because they think they're getting something out of it. Well, that's a fool's errand, but, you know, again, that I'm not here to judge them. I'm just saying I understand their mentality now. As distorted as it is, they're actually serving a purpose. 
So there is no, there are no mistakes in any of this. I mean, it's unpleasant for sure. You know, um, I mean, just it, go to the gym sometime. If you've never been, go to the gym and then exercise. And what's going to happen? You're going to feel horrible the next day. You might even not be able to lift your arms. It hurts so bad. But if you keep going, you keep getting stronger and eventually... It doesn't hurt, and you actually enjoy it. And it's probably not the best analogy, but I'm just saying that there's we're being challenged on many, many, many levels. Actually, on every level you can think of, every way, in every day, we're being challenged. And the, I know a lot of people are caught up in the narrative of, um, uh, well, what what group is this? You know, how do we defeat them? I actually get emails like this. I'm like, well, is that important, or is is it, you know, are we here for our personal growth? How, you, if you're asking me, how do you overcome it? Well, you, you transcend. And a big part of that is neutrality. It doesn't mean you don't care. It just means that, you know, that somebody asked me the other day, what is, how do we get beyond duality? And I said, neutrality. That's the answer. That's the antidote. And it sounds very simple, but it's it's very difficult to do, especially when we're down here have been here for multiple lifetimes and our souls are kind of um, conditioned, actually very much conditioned, programmed to be reacting to all this different, um, these you know, so-called factions. It's a bit of a, um, I think it's a, it's kind of humorous actually. I guess I'm, I'm hoping God has a sense of humor because Okay, you know when you see children doing things that are very childish, and and it's it is comical. On some level, unless they hurt themselves, and of course you're concerned about them, and you want to you want <laughs> you want to help them, but but you know if you observe children, we do some really funny stuff. I mean it's quirky, and do, um, do, do that's you think where we're at. Do you think there's end times? It does feel a little bit. Yeah, it feels a bit. Mm -hmm. Like with the, um, and I know we can't talk about them because the YouTube will just, but you know the things that we've got to take. Oh, we're on YouTube. Okay, I'll watch my language. <laughs> not not yet, but after. We just, oh. It'll go out on the radio and then okay. I'm just recording at the moment. But, you know, um, not on the radio, but when it eventually makes its way to yes, YouTube, no, you're understand. not allowed to mention the you-know-whats that we're all taking. But there must be yes. something about that, some kind of making us different um, yes, they are. In, okay, so the fallen ones, in their, <laughs> from their distorted perspective on things, they're very um, angry with God. Uh, they're, they, and by their own actions, they've cut themselves off from God. So anything they cannot control, they they want to kill. And so. This is all all of what we see here, like I said, is it's a it's a it's a bit of a repeat, but more of it's just an extension of the same old thing that the rebellion. And um, that's where all the manipulation is coming from behind the scenes. Naturally, they don't announce this. They're using their surrogates, you know, um, and not just individuals, you know, that we know that are infamous out there. But um, these organizations, especially the non-governmental organizations, so they're very nefarious and um, shadowy. And corporations in general have taken the place of kingdoms. And all of that was set up by the fallen ones to better serve their agenda. Um, as I said, you know, they've, they've groomed us to be their army. And um, it, I, it it's not going to work. Okay, this is the wife was asking me the other day. Who's going to punish them? Well, they basically screwed themselves. They lost this fight a long time ago. They really didn't have much of a chance um, to get what they thought they wanted, you know. And as I said, there's consequences for this, what they've done, and everybody who's gone along with it thinking that they're going to gain some sort of advantage is basically putting themselves into a very bad place for probably a very long time. You know, I do believe in divine mercy. I know that um, in my own case that, you know, that that's real. 
But you have to get to a point where you're willing to forgive yourself and others in order to move forward. And of course, you know, asking for help from these higher realms. Um, you can do that anytime, but you have to be sincere about it. You know, and I mean, because they know they can read us like a book. You can say, oh, please help, help, help. Yeah, get me out of here. Well, um, <laughs> have you learned your lesson yet? Are you sincere? You know, I, if not, you're not getting out. You're not graduating to the next level until you're ready. Um, but, you mean you know, it, asking it, help from the, the ones on the high? What about asking help from the, the lower ones that are surely nearer to hand? Uh, no, because they're in a position. They're not in a position to help anybody. They can't even help themselves. They're they are so committed to this path of um, destruction. And um, but do they dark... help their like you were saying the corporations? Do they? Oh sure. Right. Yeah. So, the, of course they, they do. That's why they, or, these people or... don't go to jail. Sorry. There's an, there's a lot of nonsense about everybody being arrested. That's part of this cabal. It, it, That'll happen at some point, but it's not going to be like uh, human agencies doing that. Are they, so at the moment, are they hybrids or are they just using like meat sacks and are they? Oh, yeah, the cloning and all that stuff. Uh, that's hard for me to say. Um, it could be all of that. They and, and here's the thing: they're desperate. They're becoming increasingly desperate because they know the cl the clock is ticking down. Is the clock ticking down? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it, so that was shown to me in 2013 because I – and I think that's how we met. A lot of people got to know me because I was exposing these the, – the parasitical spiritual parasites, the you know demons, jinns, yeah. whatever you want to call them. Um, uh, archon is what the Gnostics call them. Uh, is it, and that is a problem, but they're, that's not the only problem. But it, So once I understood that and I was reporting on it, my next – quandary was uh okay so i understand the problem now what is the solution how is this going to be, be resolved and i'd asked my uh, uh, mm, the entity that i told you before that i thought was enki that i'd met in malibu in 1985 september uh -huh. um he's one of the shiny ones but it's definitely not enki one and, of the lower uh, ones no no he's not not at all um, the, I, I, I don't want to reveal this identity right now. I just, it's been revealed to me, but as reading the shining ones and also the, a book called the path of light. Um, I think people are going to think I've, I've lost my mind if I tell you who, who it, he really is, but, um, uh, maybe I'll just tell you anyway. Um, his name is Jesus or Yeshua. He's also known as Barbello. Um, one of his titles is the father of the teachers, and that's what he meant when he said, I'm your father. It's it, There's a lot about our language that is very different from the old languages, uh, not just the Middle East, but the even the concept. Like, you know, when I travel around the world, especially in Asia, um, it's very common for, for, like, you meet an older person, a man, you're supposed to call them uncle. Hi, uncle, and they'll say hello, son. This is <laughs> this is because they know that we're all related. The same is true from a lot of these writings. You know, you read about oh, the the king had seventy sons. No, he didn't. That was just that's just a way of showing the the rank. You know, they they're subservient. He's the their father. I mean, even Anu, I don't think he had all those sons. I think you know, it's it's just a way of talking about or describing. The relationship is like a father or teacher to a pupil. Um, so anyway, yeah, now I've said it. Some people probably are tuning out right now saying, no, you cannot have had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. No, I, and I, I believe it too. totally. I believe it totally. Um, just okay. going going back to, to Yahweh. So Yahweh and Lucifer are mm -hmm. the lower shining ones together. They... Oh, okay. Good point. Good point. All right. So let's go in in the Bible. It talks about in the so-called Garden of Eden. It talks about the Elohim and or the Ben Ah Elohim. That that is actually a, the shining ones. Oh. Those who have not fallen. It's a group of them. 
the ones that were that came here to do good work. They're benevolent. They're builders of worlds. Then the Adam and Eve, there was multiple. <laughs> they they created the the Elohim, the shining ones created multiple Adam and Eve hybrids to be um, helpmates for the lower shining ones. Now the fallen ones, and so in the book the, of you know the Bible, it talks about Satan, the adversary. There, there's we're talking about a group of people, not just one guy. Oh, and the other thing was interesting. They called him a serpent in the garden. Mm -hmm. That actually means scientist. They had one-eyed serpent and two-eyed serpent. So that's again a, a form of of rank. Your your rank. Um, you know, within the scientific community, you know, like a senior scientist or a whatever, as opposed to just a, a junior scientist. So they were scientists. I mean, and a lot of people go, oh, no, they were reptilians. No, this is this again. It's, a lot has been lost in the translation, and I'm sure this is by design. Uh, it, 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 in other words, it serves the agenda of the fallen ones if we're constantly being confused and lied to. So Lucifer, but Lucifer is supposedly one of the ones like Shemyaza and yeah. Azazel. So he's, so yeah. you're saying that Azazel, Shemyaza and Yahweh are in a group together? Yeah, and that, right, that's the fallen ones. But again, they are, they, who are they? They're, they're lower ranking shining ones. So they do have abilities that are far greater than, um, and, you know, you've read this elsewhere in Sitchin's work. His interpretation is partially accurate about us, our, our ancestors, let's say, you know, Neanderthals being very much uh, primitive. Hmm. No, those are very young souls. It's, it's, it's not like we're judging them just because they are living that way. Hmm. It's part of coming down here as, as a very new young soul. You start off in a very um, simplistic lifestyle. There isn't a society. There's no structure. There isn't a bunch of rules or responsibilities. You know, it's it's very, very, very basic. Um, but that part, that's one of the main reasons the Shining Ones were here. They were they were upgrading. I mean, they, as far as I know, they seeded all life on this world. And it's not just like there's one group. They're they're spread out everywhere through through creation, on in the physical as well as the astral. And the causal plane, and I, I can't only speculate what goes on in heaven, but so-called heaven. Um, you know, you know the thing that was confusing to me, Christine, is when I had that encounter when I was out of my body in that realm of light back in 1985. Um, when when Jesus came up to me, I I and he was radiating this light. Talk about shining ones. He was literally radiating this light like I'd never seen it before. And um, I I always said he looked, it, the guy looked like Jesus. That was my first impression. And that's why I was so confused because up until just recently when I read The Path of Light, also by the O'Briens, I'd never read anything about or nobody ever talks about that Jesus had this incredible light. Now, oh yeah, they say when he, during the transfiguration on the mountain before he was crucified, he was glowing. Okay, all right. But that's not what I saw. Um, and also they say when he was in the tomb during the resurrection, that there had to have been, according to, you know, analysis of the Shroud of Turin, um, they say, oh, there had to be this massive flash of light in order to create this, this negative in, image on the, uh, the shroud, perhaps. Um, now, in the Bible, it talks about after the crucifixion, when he was on the Mount of Olives, the, the, they call it the ascension of Christ, right? Uh -huh. and, and angels assisted him, and he goes up into the heavens, supposedly to return. Well, if you read the path of light, which is, it, all it is is like a compilation of Gnostic texts that have been hidden from from us for a long time. It says that, that um, I think it was 10 days after the crucifixion, he was on the Mount of Olives with his disciples, and a, a light descended from the heavens, the sky, enveloped Jesus, and then he he went 
up into the sky, radiating a light that was immeasurable. Now, I never, now, I can see where they would think that might be angels. Perhaps it was. But in this book, it says he was given a robe of light. And how, how do we know that? Well, because he came back. He came back the next day, about 20 hours later. And the whole earth started shaking, at least according to the disciples. The, <laughs> the earth started shaking. And the light now coming from Jesus was even brighter than when he ascended. And they were they were scared out of their minds. They didn't, you know, they they didn't know what was going on. And he called to them as he's, you know, in this light. He said, "It's me. Don't don't be afraid." And they're like, "Please, please, turn down your light," you know. <laughs> and um, as that that's only one clue. But as I, as I was reading that, I thought, "Well, that's exactly what I saw. Hmm. That's exactly what I saw him, not in the physical." But in the in this, I'm sure we were in the astral realm, which apparently he's very well known in that region. Sometimes he's, in fact, when he was first given the robe of light, what he says when he came back and he was telling him what he where he was and what he was doing, he said, I, I went to these different places and I was emitting so much light now that I, I you know, now I'm wearing this robe of light, which was, I believe it was, he said it was gifted to him by the shining ones. And um, how, because there was so much light coming out of him, off of him, he was, uh, they thought that he was God. So, you know, again, there's a lot of confusion about things. And I'm sure we can clear this up. It, it has to be cleared up at some point. But he's the one, when, when in 2013, when I asked, Actually, he's the one I asked because uh, I, I didn't know who he was. He just he just said he was my father. So I I kept this connection with him. And in times of confusion, I would ask. I asked him about these demonic entities. He gave me instructions or guidance on it. And that's where I started first reporting it. And then about a year later, I asked him again, what is the solution? And he showed me how everyone was going to be forced to wake up because everything was going to be revealed between 2013 and 2022. 10-year window. The reason being is so that everybody would um, have an opportunity to make a choice, a well-informed decision as to whether, which, you know, do they want to continue down this path of the dark side or do they want to now um, deviate back on, or, you know, get back on the path of light. So do you think we're, we're on the dark side, all of us right now? I mean, not by choice. Uh, yeah, and that, and oddly enough, yes, that's 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 an interesting question. They would like to get there. They know they're not going to get everybody. The, these these the fallen ones know that they cannot convince every one of us, all the souls here, to follow them into the lower astral realm, the the dark side. Uh, and and many of us are going to literally separate. You know, in the Bible, it's called separating the wheat from the chaff. Hmm. Yeah, or the weeds from the the good the good crop so, so you were saying about time running out i mean is yeah. is it going to implode because i notice we're getting lots of flooding lots of fires yeah. do you think that it's just going to get worse and worse until well it's i know a lot of people say oh everything's already been revealed I, I, and i see that when i was told that i was okay with it i was shown a lot a lot of people freaking out some people dying of heart attacks i actually i didn't know all this other stuff probably a good thing was coming but anyway uh yeah it's it's going to get a little bit worse and and one a year from now next year this time by this thing it it's like uh people will be fully informed and have already pretty much made their decision only a few stragglers are going to be hanging on towards the end there they're, they're very stubborn how some of some souls are very stubborn about it so do you think it will end with with the Water or fire? I, I don't. Oh, oh well. Okay. Geez, since you asked, it's uh, it's predicted as fire, but or prophesized as fire. It's actually not fire as we know it. Um, it's okay. The light that I told you that was coming off of Jesus. Uh -huh. When he returns, he'll be radiating that light again, and. Uh, 
I'll have to send you the page, but for, for people who are listening to this, because um, you, you, graphically you need to see what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. There's a, there's only two kinds of people going to be going forward here. The transfigurationists, those of us that are literally going to become shining ones by, you know, we're, our souls are literally going to like um, ignite into uh, – Well, it's 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 activated. We'll be fully activated, and it'll be obvious because we'll be a glowing light. Uh, and those who are transhumanists are going to go into this dark place, and when they are touched by that light, the light that I was t- describing to you, um, and it is coming from the higher sources. That's it's. It's kind of hard to explain. It's called the cosmic web of light in the in this universe, but uh, the energy, the light coming off of Jesus is is coming from a much higher source. And when it touches those, all those who are the transhumanists, uh, they're going to literally disintegrate. It's it's really weird. I mean, and I was only shown this recently, and. So it'll be time. They say it's going to be a time of great mourning uh, because because there's you know we're going to have to literally separate from a friends and family on this world and it, it and then mo- and nobody knows when this moment is coming. Uh, I'm not saying for sure it's going to be next year, but I wouldn't be seeing that and f- literally feeling the impact of it. Uh, in my soul, unless it was pretty close at hand, hmm. and, and it has to be that way. Otherwise, because there's they've polluted this planet and and t- distorted all, everything that was good. Hmm. So they've done this to the to the extreme, Christine. You can see this. It's not it, it's 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 not a conspiracy theory. Hmm. It is a conspiracy to turn the entire planet into uh, something it was never intended to be. Now, and that can be reversed, too. So here's the thing. Last year, um, I was I was given a very powerful message or an assignment, I guess you would say. Um, it was, yeah. April is, is Easter? Oh. So May. Isn't, isn't it April? Yeah, April. Okay. Okay. So in May, late May, I woke up one morning and I, I had a knowing. I'd been given a... <laughs> I've been given, I had a conversation um, that that went like this, basically. We we need you to help us. Okay, what do you want me to do? We want you to um, reach out to everybody in your radio audience and, you know, the people that you're in contact with going forward. You need to tell them, please, on on our behalf, we want to help them deal with the fallen ones. But we cannot fully assist unless were asked for assistance and it was explained to me the reason being is because they ha- they respect our free will unlike the fallen ones the benevolent ones the so-called shining ones they um they have to respect our free will that that is the prime directive and so this dynamic was explained to me is that a lot of people in this world are are working f- for they have an allegiance to the fallen ones, whether they know it or not, through through all the different um, systems that have been established, religion, politics, law, etc. And so their willingness to continue working for the dark side, whether they know it or not, means that um, unless they ask for assistance from these the shining ones, their basically the, the, their hands are tied. There's there, there's a limited amount. Of, of things that they can do for us under these the current sit, um, conditions. So they asked me, and it sounded pretty simple to me, like, okay, just ask everyone to, to ask for our assistance dealing with the fallen ones. And in, in Catholic terms, this is called intercession. So they know about this, but I don't know if they're actually what, I mean, I guess they're not doing a whole lot in that regard because otherwise why would it fall on my shoulders to kind of remind people, I mean, yeah, it's fine to pray to God, but what we're what we're dealing with here is something that actually has a name. This particular field that we're discussing here is called angelology, 
And I did not know that. But that morning when I woke up and I knew I knew that I had agreed to do, to do work with these so-called shining ones, I didn't know that was what they called themselves. I just thought they were angels of light. That's the way I thought of it. And um, they said, uh, they cautioned me. They said, You're, if you do this for us to help humanity, you are going to be kicked off the, ra the radio. And I was like, okay, so what? And they said, furthermore, if you continue, if, you, if you're not careful, you're going to be kicked off the planet by the fallen ones. Because they're desperate they're and they're they're pissed off they're dangerous and i thought okay well then i'll just be careful and so i was kicked off the radio actually kgra i w i actually had a pretty pretty good following i mean not that that's not why i was doing it but i had a pretty good um ranking you know amongst all the shows and um yeah i and that doesn't bother me but i but once i got kicked off the radio i thought oh well, I know what comes after this. So I did some other shows. I even did Coast to Coast. And actually, I got kicked off. I almost got kicked off of Coast to Coast, even though <laughs> I'd been on I'd been on almost a dozen times with George Nori. I, I like the guy. I like everybody there pretty much except for his producer. I don't get along too good with Tom. He's, he's yelled at me before. And he, and he did again. The phone in the first end of the first half hour, the, my, my phone got, line got cut because I was talking about the Fallen Angels. And um, and then he came back on and said, hey, Robert, he, he called me back. He says, Robert, we don't talk about that kind of stuff here on this. We don't do that. I'm like, OK, I thought we, you know, we went over the material before the show, but OK, you know. Hmm. Uh, and I was like, wow, OK. So uh, I, that's why I, I have not been taught speaking publicly about this. Uh, and it's not like I feel like I'm 100% safe to do that right now, but uh, time's running out. Mm. And I, yeah, no, time's running out for the, everybody uh, to make this decision. The the, like the, 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 the gin, are they linked to, are they just the shining ones with, with a new name? Yeah, yeah. So there's, sure, there, and, and the, the thing about, yeah, like I said, there's some, some of them are benevolent. People claim that they've had, you know, um, dynamic relationships with them that were benevolent. Others clearly not. Uh, Muhammad's family actually was uh, worshipped the jinn. In fact, there's a well at Mecca where they everybody used to go there and have communion with the jinn. Uh, they probably still do, but you know that's why it was already a holy or sacred place prior to becoming the that you know that thing that they do with the. They worship the meteorite and all. There's a, there's a lot going on there. Um, but serial killers, like these jinn come inside and they like to feed off our fear and they like to like yeah. eat the fear. So is that yeah. what the shining ones are busy doing? Eating, eating? No, no, no. The fallen ones, the fallen ones. See, it's just like the movie Star Wars. It, you know, the, the, the Jedi are good. They, they use the force. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the force is actually called the cosmic web of light. And you can see that again on my homepage at unicusmagazine.com. You can see, there's a whole archive on that. Um, oh, but but if you want to see what a shining one looks like, or how we're going to become, we're going to transfigure into shining ones. If you click on the book, the book, the shining ones, and that'll put you into a, a little archive that I made. And please go to page two, and there's some there's some video there that'll. It's absolutely just mind-boggling how these things happen. It's like once I start down the path, it's really interesting how all the pieces of the puzzle kind of fit together. Mm. I mean, I, and the thing is, I'm just I'm just a messenger myself, and that, actually that's what angel means. It just means messenger. Oh, but but do they up. eat us? I mean, no, no, no. They they just consume the dark energy. Here's the thing: our DNA emits light. It actually emits and receives light. So it's 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 like we're transceivers. It's constantly coming through us, and and um, when we're in a healthy, happy state, the light is considered resonant, mm -hmm. which is sustainable. It's beautiful. It's loving. It's healthy. When we're in a very unhealthy state, like most people are being <laughs> pushed in increasingly into feeling like you know sick and scared, mm -hmm. stressed, um, our DNA emits a 
a, a different frequency of light called dissonance. Uh -huh. So there's really only two kinds of energy way, uh, dissonance and resonance. One is harmony. The other one is discord. If you think of music, right? Harmony uh -huh. is beautiful. Discord is horrible. You <laughs> Whoa, I don't want to listen to that crap. It makes you feel horrible. So in any case, the, um, the day that I was, I woke up and I knew I last year, sometime in yeah May, I woke up and I thought, Whoa, I got to do this and I'm going to do it. And I, so I went and I talked to my wife and I told her what had happened and um, I didn't want to scare her, but I just said, you know, I'm going to have to, at some point I'm going to get kicked off the radio. And at that point, when that happens, I'm going to, I'm going to have to just lay low. And I said, but we're going to be okay. I know we, the, you know, the shining ones or the angels of light are going to be watching. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to heed their, their warning. So that, that, a, that afternoon, I looked up on the bookshelf and I found there was a book that I had picked up in a library recently, but I hadn't read it. And the name of it was Angelology. Now, it's a novel, but... It, oh, I heard it, you speaking about this before yes. to Rex Bear. Yes. Now, yeah. I don't know if Rex had ever read it, and, but the thing was, this was their way of priming the pump. Because when I, 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 I had the book on there for months, maybe even a year, I'd had that book just sitting there. And I was... I don't read novels typically and something about it caught my eye in the library and I took it home, but I just put it on the shelf. I didn't read it, begin reading it until the day I got that message, you know, please assist us to assist others. And I, and I thought, wow, I mean, okay, there's, that's confirmation in my book. Okay. You could say it's a synchronicity or whatever. Uh, I just, and I, you know, so I'm reading and I'm going, okay, I've never heard of angelology. And that was an incredible how far in just a, at a year's time, a little over a year, I end up now finding, reading this book, The Shining Ones. And then, and which was the third book written by the O'Briens. I was then given the first book, The Path of Light that they wrote. And then the, and the, the, um, the publisher in the UK sent me a copy of the second book called the uh, the genius of the genius of the few. And so I'm reading all three of these books now. It's the highest level of angelology available to the general public. So my understanding of it has gone from just, you know, I mean everybody thinks they know about oh, angels, right? Yeah. Uh no, you don't. You really don't until you go down this path of angelology. It's a very real uh, criteria, not criteria, um, category or study. It's a very in-depth study of not just angels, but our relationship with them and um, good and bad. Really, I mean, seriously good and bad. And ultimately, here's the thing. We are them. <laughs> we are them. It's, it's, I know that the fallen ones want to make us feel like we're something less than them. But that's not the case. That's a lie. That's one of the many, many, many lies that they have told us. Uh, and um, it only becomes real if you believe it, if you incorporate that into your consciousness or your soul. Why do so, they like um, eating the dark energy? What does that do when they inhale it or whatever? Yeah, they absorb it. It it. It gives them some sort of strength or, they, or a feeling of superior or superiority <laughs> over us in, um, by disempowering others, they feel empowered. And see, this is, that's what it's unsustainable. It's, it is predatory. It's parasitic. It, it is dissonance. It, and <laughs> that's why we call it the dark side, because the further you go down that path, it really literally is a dead end. And it, you can only go so far before you just, that's it, you're done. There is no more to it. Whereas the, the path of light is infinite and it's sustainable. It's all about um, helping, um, how you help yourself by helping others. That's what reciprocity is. That, and that's what truly, you know, if you want to, 
think of understand meritocracy is in order to gain credit be of service okay it's not that difficult and actually the more you empower others the more empower you become oh well gee now we're all winning aren't we hmm. <laughs> so and that is sustainable it's beautiful that's what love really is in in the in the grander sense is um when we all help each other do better feel better yeah it's interesting i mean they seem to like when you read about you know what people do and torturing and stuff and mm. you can tell it's them coming through like you know young mm -hmm. men that go out and do these murders and stuff and it just must they must hate us in a certain way some of them <laughs> i know not all of them but some yeah. of them like in when you they, with the gin when people divide them up they've got the Afrit, the Majid, and the Shaytan are supposedly the ones that really hate humanity. Um, yeah. And I wonder why they hate us if they created us, or is it just a disgust? Well, the lower ones hate everything to do that that still has the God spark in it, because they've they've lost theirs. They've they lost their connection to the Creator. And they hate his creation. That's why they are constantly trying to make uh, artificial <laughs> versions that they can control. So they, that's why they manipulate what God created. And then they also create these simulated simulacrum, whatever the, you know, artificial intelligence or these hybrid, you know, things that... Uh, Again, it's it's there. They want to be in control, and the thing about free will is, uh, you're if you respect other people's free will, then yours will be respected. Your free will is is respected as well. But when you go down this path of disrespecting people's free will, y then you are going to suffer the same fate. Hmm. It, well, it's, well, what? what happens with all these people praying to Yahweh? So a lot of them are praying <laughs> to Yahweh. So is he got building up a lot of strength or is, is he a real shining one? No. I mean, he's a fall. Okay. The original one obviously was a psychopathic uh, tyrant and uh, allegedly, at least the way the, the authors put it, position it is that he was, re he was replaced for whatever reason, he was replaced. I think it's because he was just making things really a mess of things. Not a good, uh, not a good leader. And then what and for, happened? Well, I mean, so they put him a, a different one in there. You, you might have noticed that he doesn't. Um, after that, the the Yahweh didn't live amongst them anymore. There was a there was a certain point where he just wasn't living. Look this up. Pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. you, you need to check that Google this, not just you, but the people in this audience. If you want to know what we're talking about, look at the pillar of fire and you'll see this amazing um, compound that they created for Yahweh. Clearly not God of the universe or, or creator of all. <laughs> doesn't need to live in a tent, you know, and, and be served uh, kosher food. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like it's really obvious. It's so it's so obvious. And um, so is he there... is he a being that he's one of the lower shining ones? But yeah. given that everybody, given that Catholics are busy praying to him, is he pretty yeah. puffed up right now? Or? Well, uh, the original one, I don't know where he is. I think they they probably had to give him a serious time out. Um, but again, the energy. You're making a good point. The energy that's being directed towards Yahweh is is going into the collective and that's true of all of these religions on the planet in my opinion at some level they are um, uh, feeding off of that energy of the people that worship it just means to work for it. so worship means we're working for these entities parading around as God or gods um, and not and also giving us dictates commandments whatever some of them obviously are you know make sense but most of them don't and um it's it's not coming from god per se it's coming from these fallen angels the fallen ones 
uh, formerly known as the Shining Ones. And, uh, you know, it's it's not in I don't think that there's there's no way there's at some point because of divine mercy that, you know, some of these fallen ones could rehabilitate. And in fact, that was the whole purpose of giving them a second chance. Whoops. Um, my headphones are cutting out here. It's OK. Um, so th I do believe that that uh, all souls have. A, we're given um, as much time as we need in, to to learn our lessons. But that's not – having said that, that can take an immense amount of time, an immense number of lifetimes to do that. And so it's weird because we're we, – I know we see ourselves as part of collective, which is true, but we're also individuals, wow. very much individuals. And we are responsible for our uh, – the path that we take and also the progress that we make. So what is all the stuff about the, you know, the COVID and the, um, you know, the injections and what, what's all that about? Is that population control? Of course it is. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. Remember I told you uh, back before the so-called flood, the um, when the, the fallen ones were Im imprisoned, they uh, the, everything that they had created, all all the hybrids and the, and the offsprings, you know, from mating with the the newly minted Homo sapiens, uh, all of that was destroyed. So so there's a lot of anger about that, and more just to be blunt about it, as I said before, anyone and anything that they cannot control here here in their prison slash fortress, they want to kill it. They want to kill it. And it's it's um, there's no negotiating with them. Not that I really want to. I'm just saying that they're they're really literally hell bent on the uh, this path, the path to the dark side. And, and they do, want to do, get as many of us in, as possible. Go ahead. Do, do you think that when the earth. You know, when Christ comes back and we all make our decision to rise and fall, will that mm -hmm. mean that the earth will disintegrate or will it go on spinning? Oh, good point. Um, so this is one of the things he allegedly said to his disciples when he returned from after he ascended into heaven. And this is the part nobody ever talks about. I've never seen this before. It's amazing. Um, he said when he came back, he goes, um, the light... <laughs> The light you saw coming off of me as I ascended, he said, it actually kept getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And he says, if I'd stayed on the planet, the whole planet would have disintegrated, hmm. which I thought was astonishing that he was even saying that. And there's a lot of stuff in there that he says, allegedly. I, I feel it's a way more accurate. And it's probably why the, you know, the Romans felt like they had to not only kill all the Gnostics, but destroy all their books. Hmm. Um so that they could create this this new fictional version of not just Jesus, but these these truths, the teachings mm. that are they're not religious actually. They're just these uh, dynamics, the the way things actually the, the mechanics of how things work, uh, these different realms and stuff. It should be common knowledge. In fact, I'm sure it is on you know other worlds. But anyway. So it will, talked, it will blow no, up. No, it's not going to – oh, no, no. To get back to your point, it's not going to disintegrate the whole planet, though. He can obviously regulate it. Like I said, when he when he first came back, he, he descended back down to the planet like 20 hours later. Even though his light was brighter, he was able to re cause it to um, dim. You know, I mean, he basically – the light receded back into him. This particular device, he, it's called the robe of light. Right. It, and – yeah, the way to describe it, I don't know if it's some sort of superconductive material, what it is. I really don't know. But I'm sure that's, that's – having actually seen that myself and felt that, uh, it's kind of like this. They say that you know no man can physically look at God and live, mm. look upon God, because the light is so – that light, that energy is so powerful. Physically, I don't think we're designed for it. But if we're if – if we're at a point where we need to be um, activated, 
where our souls are going to be like, think of it this way. In, in all of us, our, our souls are like a spark, a God spark, a seed of light. Right. And, and it's, it, most of us are very much dormant right now. Hmm. Okay. That it's, it's like in a fire, you know, you have embers, they, yeah. they dwindle, they, right. But you can re you can, you can blow on the embers. You can kindle the embers until they be, they burst into flame again. Well, that's very much, that's what the transfiguration is all about. We hmm. will be transfigured, not transformed, but transfigured, uh, in other words, our true potential is going to be reactivated. It's no longer going to be dormant. And then we'll still live on this place? I, I don't, yeah, the good question. I don't think so. Uh, not uh, unless you really want to. And even mm. then, I think that the planet has been so badly damaged mm. that um, there's going to have to be a grace period where they, the Shining Ones are going to come back. That's it's one of the reasons the Shining Ones are not here, by the way. That's why they had to leave. They, they used to live among us. And, you know, they were they were grooming us to be like them gradually over time. But um, so, yeah, I, I think the planet is going to need to be cleansed. And so we're, pro we're going to go we're, we're going to go somewhere else anyway mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. But that that would have been the natural progression is that that our souls have to migrate mm -hmm. to, to either not just different worlds, but to different realms mm -hmm. along the path of light. That's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's really that's not just our true potential. That's that's what we were made to do mm. in the beginning, and and so we've kind of. I know it's like I said, it felt like a mistake, but I don't now. I, I taking a, a, a you know much. I have to step back, look at the bigger picture, take a broader look at this, and I'm I'm of the opinion now that no, this was not a mistake. It's a it's a tough curriculum that we're in here, obviously, um, but it's an opportunity for all of us to learn and grow, to become more perfect. This is the thing about Gnostic philosophy. It says that we, in our tr current form, are not perfected, but we I, can become perf perfected. I noticed... I mean, I do believe everything you're saying because it's it's hotting up a bit, you know, a lot. I yeah. mean, just to, to watch Netflix, a lot of people have been saying to me about it. it's got a satanic agenda. And I know it's arrived mm -hmm. in the UK here, um, the Netflix building. Um, they, they, they do seem to have an agenda. And I was watching the um, American horror, uh, the Apocalypse version, the series yeah. Apocalypse. And, you know, it was really very much about trying to get people on the side of um, Lucifer. You know, Lucifer's one of the lowest shining, probably is one of the lowest shining. And... Yes, his name, his name literally means the light bearer. It's the same thing as saying a shining one. Right, right. So he's definitely one of them. And Azazel, probably? Yeah, again, it's sort of, uh, oh man, when we're talking about Lucifer, Satan, or whatever, any of these guys, you've you got to understand, according to the Book of Enoch, they all swore an oath to to stand united in the rebellion. So you, it doesn't, it, first of all, um, Anki is a higher ranking shining one. He has nothing to do with the rebellion. They just projected that onto him because it's their way of throwing mud on their adversary. Mm. So, so um, it, once again, the truth is very difficult to discern here in this world because there's so many layers of lies that have been told to us. Mm. I, I'm telling you this because the, this particular book we've been discussing, The Shining Ones, when it first came out, uh, me, media didn't want anything to do with it. Academia didn't want anything to do with it. Naturally, the relig religious orders didn't want anything to do with it because it's not a religious book. It talks about re what most people think of as religious events in a secular, scholarly, scientific way. And that's what I was looking for. That's what I really felt, and, you know, somebody somewhere had to have these records. I'm sure something like this already exists in the Vatican libraries. Oh, yeah. They're off limits. Even so, Sitchin went there. They didn't give him, they didn't give him hardly any information. I bet. So, yeah. so what you're saying is, like, more or less, there is no Lucifer. There's just the shiny ones, and they're all a, like, conglomerate. Well, okay, there is there is a unity amongst, but there's also a hierarchy amongst 
like I said, the shining ones are not as powerful or as evolved or advanced as the invisible ones. Hmm. Meaning, I, I guess they're called that because they can't even appear in, they don't even usually come to the physical realm. They wouldn't descend down here, but if they did, the way Jesus was talking about it, he said, they, you know, you couldn't even look at them. You could not look at them because their light would be so bright. He also said something weird about how we don't fully see the light coming off of our sun here, which I thought was fascinating. How would he know that unless he really somebody taught him? And and I'm going to say something here that I know is going to upset people. It's my understanding that when he when Jesus in the in the New Testament when he was talking about his Father in heaven, he was not talking about Jehovah or Yahweh, and he was not talking about God either. He was talking about his teacher, his teacher, and he mentions it in the Path of Light as someone. Um, I'm not even not even sure how it's pronounced, but it's it's spelled J E U. And I, I'm not sure that's even important, other than the fact that he, he was taught. Clearly, he was taught by people um, or someone higher ranking than the Jewish rabbis, and possibly even the Egyptian priests. And he may have wandered into India, but the the bottom line is he was getting information from a very high source. Clearly, he imparted some of that information to me to pass on to others. He taught me how to teach other people. Because a lot of people have asked me, it's like, Robert, where are you getting all this information? How do you know this stuff? You know, well, obviously I've had help, hmm. you know. and But the only reason that I'm being given this information is to help others. Hmm. If I was using this to some, or if, I know this for a fact. This is the, this is the agreement. If I distort the information that's given to me in any shape, fashion, form, uh, it's going to get cut off. You know, if I try to use it for to to uh, you know for abusive purposes, uh, no, it's then basically my library card is no longer valid. I don't get I don't get access to that kind of stuff. Why would they help me to hurt other people? That's that's not who they are. Hmm. Absolutely not. Well, I'm glad you've come on, and, 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 and thank you so much. I'm sure people would just be fascinated to, to hear, you know, because um, you're always hugely popular. Well, thank you. I, I didn't really set off to do this work. Honestly. No, 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 but I just mean that people like you and they trust you. Oh, thank you. you. Well, because I like people. No, here's the thing. I love you and everyone here on this world or I wouldn't even be here oh. I, I came here to help because oh. you got to understand something Christine um, think about it we're going to just make a very quick analogy here um, you I would not go to a prison to visit for any reason actually until unless there was someone there that we truly loved whether it's friend or family right no reason whatsoever to go to a prison so you got to understand a lot of the souls that came here actually did come to help um, because this is a, this is a very tough situation. Oh, and the, the whole goal is really to help rehabilitate. Uh, that's, that's really why this is being, it feels like it's dragging on forever, but it's not, oh. it, it, it's all relative. And um, th th I'm, I also want to just put it into this kind of context. This nonsense about disclosure coming from official sources, oh, yeah. they, they are not going to tell us the truth. They can't because they are collaborating with the fallen ones. And honestly, they didn't have a choice in the matter. They were tricked or forced into collaborating with the fallen ones under false pretenses, naturally. And um, this narrative about all these beings coming here, you know, that is it's it's a huge distraction it's not accurate oh. and it it's it is not helpful not helpful oh, well uh, it's helpful for the fallen ones because then we don't have to talk about them they don't have to be in the limelight and they they really don't want to be they don't you know what i mean they don't want to have to take any responsibility for their deeds um so what what so are these what are these uh ufos are they 
the ships of Shining Ones use, or are they, is that, what's that? Yeah, so some of them are actually, yes, think about it. And, you know, in prison, you have a whole administrative body. Hmm. That that because otherwise you can't just you can't just lock people up and have no, uh, the, I mean logistically you got to have some some group that is overseeing the prison system. Yeah. Okay, so there's some of that going on, but uh, uh, the the majority of what people see is actually the fallen ones. I I, I told you they're imprisoned here, but they st they still <laughs> they know how to do things. They have access to um, materials to build technology, and and they've convinced governments all over the world to work with them, again under false pretenses. How how do they appear to these? Um, do they appear as, oh, they give it all the, um, <laughs> they do the thing where they appear as like blonde Palladians and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I see. Yeah, sure, and yeah, and again, or those so-called blonde Palladians could have been um, created. In a lab by the uh, and I, or the reptilians or the greys. I'm sure the greys are were built here by the fallen ones. Yeah. Um, yeah so like I said, it's it. Yeah, well, sorry, I don't want to repeat myself. I know what I said is sounds a bit odd because nobody else is talking about it yet in yeah. that particular fashion. Okay, this particular perspective that I'm sharing with you, I feel is accurate. Otherwise, I wouldn't even waste my time and yours yeah. discussing this from from this perspective um, and there's no pressure I, I really if, if people if you want more information you have to go to my website at unicusmagazine.com and I put most of it's free um, why did they why did they create like reptilians what was the point of that <laughs> just bad ones oh here's some bad and here's now here's the good and we'll protect yeah, you from yeah, the yeah. bad and well, it's because they can, for one thing, mm. and um, it's it's just like before the flood. This is what they did. They t they they wanted to create a, a such a strong military presence with technology as well as just sheer physical muscle um, that was subservient to them. Yeah, okay, look in in the movie Star Wars, what did they do? They created clones. Uh, they created all these different, I mean, mostly clones of a particular bounty hunter, and and they the dark side used them to trigger events that they felt was going to. They wanted to drag everybody into the dark side, and then they would be reign supreme. Oh. But obviously, it doesn't work. It's not that simple. It doesn't always work out. I don't think it's ever going to work out because. And here's the, the funny little secret about it all. Um, the dark side wouldn't exist if the light, God, whatever, uh, hadn't permitted the lower realms to be created and administrated. That is probably the most shocking thing about the in introduction to the book, The Shining Ones, that I've ever seen. And, and I'm 61 now in this lifetime. And I've been reading at a very high level since I was a little boy. And not that that means anything other than I've spent, I've devoted my life to to studying what's, you know, because I knew something was wrong. Hmm. I knew something was very, very wrong at a very early age for whatever reason. Again, I feel like I've been, you know, I've been guided to do things that other people tend to ignore. Right. And so I, um, I know it's although it sounds odd, a lot of the stuff I'm telling you, I feel is is truly accurate. And and of course, I've made mistakes along the path. We all do. Uh, and I'm willing to admit that, you know, and I apologize if I've you know, unintentionally misled people specifically about Anki or Lucifer, the, the whole I think. But they you know, this again, they don't make this easy. If it was really transparent, everybody would have already figured it out by now, mm. right? So in that regard, it's a bit of a riddle. Yeah, of course. Some people evolve and learn things. We can't all know everything at once. And I think people right. will respect you for that, that we've all grown along with you. And it's all part of a process, you know, that um, 
you've shared from your heart and I think that's more valuable than somebody that comes along and says you know this is you know this is who I am and this is what I know so we've all we've all come along on your journey with you which makes yeah I've it... always said it's it's not about me Christine it's about us we, oh. and because well because we're first of all we're all related yeah. and we're all in this together but at our own pace that's that's the interesting I think it's fantastically intelligent how this this um it's it's incredibly complex all right so there has to be an a, an immense amount of intelligence behind all this in order for it to function even though sometimes it looks like it's it's falling apart it isn't you know that's that's to me see I, i've always been an optimist and even in the face of the most dark whatever dark times some part of me has always remained optimistic because i know not only is God real, but God, the creation, you just look at the, the, the creation is, is in, it's just fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Um, you, you know, uh, what thrills me recently, I actually had a communication with a butterfly. Oh. may not sound like much to you, but um, it, it proved to me that not only did the butterfly hear me, but um, uh, it means my level of sensitivity as a soul is actually going up in the midst of a time when we're trying to be the dark side is trying to suppress us. Mm. So I, I only tell you this because I, I, I'm not unique mm. in that regard. I, I know it's happening. Like I said, what I saw was absolutely fan, just floored me. I could literally feel the event like energy just flowing through me. And I, I I mean it's like it's not some intellectual exercise we're having here about you know could we be shining lenses it's, it's like uh, it, it, no we are we are absolutely our souls clearly are seeds of light I've been saying that all along our, our God spark is about to be kindled sometime in the near future so and and I'm telling you and everyone this so that we you can prepare. I'm not sure I'm fully prepared for it, but I'm, I'm working on it every day. Mm. Anyway, do appreciate it, Christine. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Yes, it's been, it's been lovely. I've been sitting here getting lots of sun booming at me, listening oh. to you. Oh, I know. You guys are having a bit of a heat wave. Yeah, we are. We It just kicked off today, so we're in 30 okay. degrees, which is hot for us. Yeah, I know. I know. My 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 dad and my stepmom live in near Sheffield. Oh yes. And Hope Valley, actually, and it's lovely there. But um, every time it gets a little bit hot there, they, they always complain. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm here in sunny Southern California. It's like uh, every day is it pretty much is warm, and uh, so I'm used to hotter weather. Yeah, it's it's no, it's lovely. It's I'm sure I'll get sick of it, you know, once we've had it every day <laughs> for two yeah. weeks. It'll be a come back the usual rain that we get. But um, yeah, oh, and shame shame for our brothers uh, and sisters in, in Germany and Belgium. Prayers for them because they have flooding right now, and anybody that's oh, going no. through the fires and you know that's just really bad to hear about. Oh, sorry, I didn't know that was happening. Yeah, it's just you know this biblical oh. rain that keeps coming yeah. down and we had it we had it here a week ago i mean it, it, it flooded but then it receded thank goodness mm -hmm. it was just for a day but it was weird such heavy rain i've never seen it in my lifetime you know well there's a lot of things coming that we've never seen before but that's okay yeah. um it, it it's it's quite an interesting time to be here and uh, again you know just all right i'll leave you with this uh, in order to increase your resonance and connectivity to creation or the creator uh -huh. is remain calm in the midst of chaos. It sounds simple. It isn't. Also, be kind when others are being cruel. Very difficult. Very difficult because they're always trying to provoke us to go to, to, go to anger. Uh -huh. Third, be creative when others are being destructive. Also very difficult for some. Fourth, probably most importantly, be courageous when others are, are, are being um, fearful. Because fear is, is the surest and quickest path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. And, and, and everything, it's just a slippery slope. 
So again, being calm, kind, creative, and courageous will actually increase one's resonance. And in the process, you will then positively affect others. In other words, it's, it's contagious and others will feel it and you'll be helping them. And you'll be helping yourself because the, the more resonance that you contain in your soul and body, the less the dissonance will be able to affect you. Right. And you create the resonance by doing those things that you just said. Those are the simplest way I can, I can describe it. There's a lot of other ways. I mean, fasting, prayer, meditation, laughter, dancing, you know, there's a lot of different, but the, that the simplest things I just explained to you actually are very difficult to do in this world. It's very, very challenging to remain calm right now. Mm. A lot of people are very, you know, being kind. Okay. Even to your enemies. Uh, Cause you know, if you, if you're not, then you become like them. Mm. Right. You, you know, it's, it's anyway, it, it, it's just, um, it's this is a formula that was given to me to give to others something to think about mm. the more you practice it the, the easier it gets and the stronger you become mm. yep brilliant thank you so much robert oh, my that, pleasure. that's that's really lovely i've written that down actually <laughs> <laughs> pin it up somewhere okay. and try and look at it every okay. day Th thank you very much robert and um thank you for coming on i hope you come back again and Thank you, listeners, for joining us, and I'll post a link below when this goes on, um, finally, onto YouTube, and um, you can get hold of Robert and um, his website and all his teachings on there. Thank you, Robert, for coming on. God bless you, and have a really bless nice you evening. You too, Christine. Take God care. God bless. Bye. Bye, everybody, Bye -bye. and thank you for listening. Have a great week.